Identities. You've been doing identities already. You've done, at this point in the course, you've done trig identities. A lot of trig identities. You've done some identities with like definite integrals, where you've got an even or a non-function, that kind of thing. You've done polynomial identities, where you compare um, one polynomial, which should be exactly the same as the other one, except presented in a different form. Now we're going to look at binomial identities, which is really short for identities that involve the binomial coefficients. But that doesn't quite roll off the tongue as easily, okay? So when I say binomial identities, this is the kind of stuff I mean. Now we've looked at these simple ones before. Um, these all have names because they're so important. Uh, we're actually going to just, to, for the sake of it, remember how to do this one because it's been a little while since you looked at this. This is really easy. It might take, let's see, I've got two, two and a half lines written there. How would you go about proving something like this? Just like all identity proofs, you've got to start with one side. Which side would you like me to start from to move to the other one? Do you want to start with this one and go to here? Or start with this one and go to here? I'd probably start with this one and then go to here because I know what the definition of that is, I can quote it. Whereas I could probably work out what that is, but by the time I've done that, I might as well start it from that side. So I'm gonna actually do this proof, right hand side. I'll begin by just stating it, and then I'm going to expand it all in terms of factorials and what have you. So let's just jot it down first. The numerator is the easy bit. Okay, be careful. The denominator, what's the first thing I write? N minus, N minus R, factorial. Okay, and then rather than do the simplification all in one hit, right, I'm going to do it with my subtraction. Yeah, you'll see it. You see, it's, it comes out very quickly, right? Uh, I'm going to do the whole substitution and then I'll do all the simplification after. Because it is a proof after all, right? I want to show the logic. So for a normal one, right, we can quote this one. It's n factorial on r factorial n minus r factorial, right? So you go this, take away this for the second piece, right? The part I'm trying to work out right now. So this time I need to do this, take away this. Let's write that down. That's the top part of the NCR, right? And there's the bottom part. N minus R. And the factorial applies to the whole thing. But as soon as you've written it down clearly, you can see the n's cancel, the negatives cancel, and what you get left with is this. Okay? Which, of course, is what we were quoting just a second ago. So there's your result. Okay? Now, these were pretty simple. All you really need to know is the definition of what NCR was, how to just work with some simple arithmetic. Sometimes you had to be careful with factorials and so on. But that's basically it, okay? Now this one here, I'm not going to rehearse the whole proof for you, but the principle works in much the same way. What do you think? Should you start from the left-hand side or the right-hand side? Right-hand side? Right-hand side? Mm -hmm. Left-hand side? Left. Now in this case, this is just like with the trig identities where sometimes it's like there isn't always obviously one side that's simpler than the other. These are both kind of messy in their own way. I don't like this. It's not that obvious what's going to happen out of that. But then again, this is like a pair of fractions. It's very unusual to like, how do I start with one fraction and then in what way am I supposed to break that up to get two? So I'm just gonna show you really quickly. You don't, don't worry about writing this down. I can put it up again in a second if you like. I chose to start from the left-hand side and this is what my proof looked like. Okay, so I started with the left-hand side with the pair of fractions. Okay. The details are not important because you can just crunch through them. But you can see, I just evaluated what each of them was and then I thought, okay, I know where I'm headed. It's a bit of a messy fraction, but at least it's one fraction. So if I'm getting two fractions into one, then my first task obviously is common denominator, right? Just like with any other fractions. So you can see what I'm trying to do here. Can you see what I've gone done from this line to this line on the first fraction? What have I done from here to here? I've multiplied the numerator and denominator by r plus one. Do you see why I did that? Because that r plus one on the top We'll turn this guy into an r plus 1 factorial. That'll give me a common denominator. Do you see that? All right. I chose to also multiply this one by n minus r and n minus r. Do you see that? That turns this into n minus r, or factorial. Now I've got a common denominator, and then you just have to be careful with your algebra, and out pops the result that you needed. Okay? I will point out, it's still not entirely 100% obvious, because you get to this spot, Right? You do the numerator, and you're like, but that, that denominator looks fine. Like, what are you going to do with that? You actually have to make it a bit messier to get to this. Right? Do you see how this comes out of this? 
Do you see it? Right? So it's still not as straightforward. That's why I'm not doing it with you right now, because it's not the emphasis. But you can see the skills that we're assessing here, right? It's like, okay, you know what NCR notation is, and you can work with it if you know where you're supposed to be getting. Does that make sense? 